And we are live for show number 24. Show number 24. We are live on Instagram, on uh, YouTube, and Facebook. I have my partner in crime with me. Instagram, on uh, YouTube. Already, you already know I had to mute my other laptop here. I think it's a, uh, a ritual. Yep. So, Every week. Hey guys, uh, welcome to this week. Uh, we're going to let um, Adrian take over while I do a little. Already, you already know I have to. Is that me? That's you. No, not me. You do that. Not me. Well, yeah, that might have been me. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I'll go ahead and take over. You handle that portion over there. I'll go ahead and do my rounds of shouting out people and where they're from. Hello, hello. It's me, Adria. Yes, I know y'all missed me since last Thursday. Hello, fam. Lucy Pearl. Palomino Blast. We got New Jersey, North Carolina, Pennsylvania. Hey, Off-Roader. Uh, Instagram already. What's up? I was just watching your YouTube right before you went live. Thank you for all the golden knowledge. Hey, welcome. Okay, first things first. Let's do a little thing we do at the beginning. Welcome. This is show number 24. Um, you're here with Ty Flipman Taylor, me, Adria, on his Flippin' R. Brought to you every Thursday. So you still have time to tag a friend, message a friend, tell them to hop on, log on, get some good information on how to make some money, long-term, short-term, whatever it is that you need, wholesaling houses, Lots of golden information here. Um, 200 plus videos available on YouTube, adding more and more every day. Has wonderful resources available to you, such as the Dealulator um, app. If you weren't here last week, it is a must have. Um, we'll probably talk about it, but it's Dealulator, like calculator, but Dealulator.com. Visit that, download that. Um, Again, lots of resources. We're here to answer your questions. I'm really reading the questions. He's answering the questions, but hey, you know, uh, post them. Please make sure you put your name because sometimes your hashtags and, you know, usernames I can't pronounce or whatever. And tell me where you're from. Sometimes your the answers to your questions are area specific. So if Ty is ready, I am ready. And as you can see, guys, we're representing this month, which is October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we're repping pink with the flip man and the ribbon. Um, so anyone who has had a loved one or has had themselves um, breast cancer, men or women, it does exist, ladies. Um, more power to you. We're with you. Solidarity. And we're ready to rock and roll. You ready? Let's get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Well, let's go ahead. I am live all the way around. <laughs> Will Ty come to Baltimore, Maryland? Actually, you were there not too long ago, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I, I'm going to be. Um, yeah, I was there. I'm, I'm going back. So, um, yeah. To answer the all right. We got what a flip daddy and flip mama. I like that. Flip mama. That's me. I, I'm Flip Mama. Okay, so Shaq, I didn't. I had some issues on Facebook, but I will. I have not forgot about you. Sheila Milchill says, Gator time. I got something for you. Um, Ski TV asks, do you offer a one-on-one? -on -one? Want to mention something about that? Well, yeah, uh, before I do that, um, if you see this in the replay mode, which you will, if, you, if you're if you not watching this live at 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays, 6 p.m. Central, 5 Mountain, 4 p.m. on the West Coast, uh, then it goes in the replay mode and you can uh, comment um, in the comment section. I'll, I'll get to it normally and answer stuff within a couple of days, a lot of times the same day. Or whatever, I just answer a lot of stuff at once. So uh, just remember that. But um, as far as the uh, coaching um, uh, one on one, well, the definition of one on one can be a couple of things. And I think it's all one on one in reality because it's by phone, directed with me, text, or email. But if you mean live in your face now, that's more training than actual coaching because I still got to come back home. 
and you're going to be at home. So the real coaching is when I'm at home, you're at home. But I get what you're saying as far as the training. Yeah, I will come to your city and I do offer that. Uh, you can text me on that. It's not cheap because this is not really what I do for a living, meaning the coaching and all this stuff that you see here. This is a hobby that's dwarfed into something I can make a little money off of, but meet some interesting people and spread some knowledge that I think people can use to change their financial situation. But I make my living on doing deals, so you're taking me away from my living, so it's a little expensive. I'm being straight up, it's expensive. So, But if you're willing to pay the freight, um, hey, we can make it happen. So just text me. Call or text me. Wait a minute. I can hear you say yeah, that again. I muted myself for a second there. I, I did that. That was me. But yeah, guys, the freight on tie, you can only imagine. Have you ever shipped anything? UPS, imagine shipping tie. I'm just. Oh, that must have. All right. He ain't fitting in a box. <laughs> I fit in a box. We're going to all fit in a box. But uh, yeah, I fit in a box. Okay, Tracy Hinton on Facebook. You said you were having trouble with Andrew up. Oh, she says she's on. So that's good. I see you there. Um, let's see here. Just jumping right into our questions. I am in Orlando, Florida. I would need to be available by phone for advice. Uh, I think we already answered that. Um, let's see here. Gregory Woods on YouTube asked, is going through the internet to find houses the new way instead of signs or postcards? Well, it's not a new way. Um, it, it's always been an option as long as the internet and houses have been posted on, on the internet. But understand if you're talking about houses that are for sale, that are listed on the internet, yeah, you can find deals that way. But uh, as far as wholesaling, it makes it a little bit more difficult depending on what type of buyers you have. If you have buyers that really don't frequent the internet or whatever, then you're good. I mean, you can, you can have a number of those, but if you got buyers that are savvy and everything they do is pretty much online with for starting their due diligence, they're going to find this. In most cases, they're going to find that same ad by just simply Googling the address. So it's not a new way of finding deals. It's, it, it's a very tedious, and it takes a lot of patience, a lot of consistency to find deals that way. I personally don't do it just because it doesn't fit me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, um, I prefer for people to call me. Or, now I do have an option where I do reach out to people, but these properties are off market, meaning they're not advertised for sale online or offline in most cases. So I do do that. But as far as marketing and having people call you, when they call you, you know, you're halfway there. Now, if somebody's trying to sell something, you're halfway there also, but it's just different because you lose some of the control um, by it already being advertised. But again, you can't do deals that way. I'm just telling you, you have to be very persistent, consistent and understand that it's, it's a little different because it's already been advertised for sale. You're muted. You're muted. What that keeps happening? Sorry, guys. Um, Stewart on Instagram. Oh, Tamla Stewart. Do you recommend commercial or residential properties? I have a friend named Tamla Stewart. What? What? what where are you, Tamla? Oh, well, I know that. The way you at? Are you his friend? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I know. She would text me. She would tell me laughing. Yeah, don't sick. admit it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, I I can't say I recommend one over the other. It depends on you. Now, now, nothing prevents you from doing both because that's what I attempt to do on a daily basis. Uh, but uh, if you had to choose between the two, so it depends on how fast you want to get paid. If you are if you need to get paid quickly, no question houses is going to be your, your option. But if you have patience, a lot of patience, and have some time to put into it, then commercial. You know, so uh, there you go. And because the paydays are bigger, uh, it's significantly bigger in a lot of cases. But uh, it's just going to depend on how much time uh, you have to uh, put in it. All right. Uh, we have a gentleman. I'm assuming gentleman. I apologize. He says, hey, peeps, just want to know how y'all overcame the fear of starting. I'm from South Africa, and all these tools that you're using don't work. For example, Zillow. What do you mean it doesn't work? 
Uh, I don't know what he uh, means. He said he was in South Africa now. Uh, I don't know what he means when he said it doesn't work. Uh, but to, the fear of starting, well, uh, that's going to vary from individual to individual. Um, I'm pull out the, well, you can go ahead and pull it out. Pull it out. Oh, pull, pull it out? Yeah. What, wait, I have to put it on. See? I, I, I don't know if how gay I am, but nothing, uh, I'm not afraid to take risk. You know, a lot of people don't take a risk because they're they afraid to fail. Yes. So that's going to be the hold up for a lot of people because the whole purpose of wholesaling is that money doesn't prevent you from doing it. So what prevents you from doing it then? If money doesn't prevent you, that, so that's why I look at it. If money is not going to be is an issue for, for me to get into something to try to make more money, then I'm all in. Uh, but for some people, money may not be the issue or whatever, and they still ain't pull, haven't pulled the trigger. I can't tell you. You'd have to tell me what some of your what some of your hangups are in order for me to be able to probably advise you or, 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 or give you my opinion on what I would do to try to overcome that. Basically, guys, get gator, get gator, it's <laughs> gator. It's a gator. It kind of was a dinosaur at first, but it's a gator. Oh, All right. Uh, what you say? Same family. Same family. That's yeah. right. Uh, what do I put in LOI for earnest money on empty commercial? What What do you put in the LOI as far as earnest money? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm assuming he means the amount. Uh, it'll It'll vary depending on the the amount of the property. You can do a standard of uh one percent of the actual offer price uh that but it didn't have to be that way all of this stuff is negotiable you know whatever you can get away with if you know if you're going to actually put up earnest money if that's the question that you're asking all right on instagram we have mm, i told y'all y'all so no see what's the largest amount you've made on a wholesale deal um, how does 40, 42,000, I think 42,000, 42,000. Cha-ching! That's not like some money. Uh, let's see here. YouTube, off Roder says, hey, Ty, I just had a realtor tell me that what I'm doing is illegal and that I can be reported. Who can he report me to? The video that you should watch is Five Mistakes newbies should avoid for wholesaling houses go watch that particular video but to answer your question they don't know what they're talking about so your, your follow-up to that realtor so what you're telling me is that the same some of not all but some of the same closing attorney and title company that close my deals or close wholesaler deals or closing your deal so you're telling me they're putting their license or their business in jeopardy for me and others like me you don't know what you're talking about. Just say you don't know what you're talking about. Don't say it's illegal because you're supposed to be an expert and you've never heard of it. Just say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't just automatically say it's illegal because they can't point to anywhere to show you that it's illegal. What they're confused about, and I don't know how you explain it, it does sound like you're doing the same thing. The difference is, is that whenever you place a purchase and sales agreement on a property, you've, you've, and injected yourself into the deal, you have equitable interest within the transaction for the time frame that you and the seller agreed upon. That separates you from a realtor when they only just have an agreement to either market uh, a property for sale or they act as an agent to locate a property for a buyer. That's different than what you do. All right, there you have it, guys. Just because you don't know something don't mean it's not something that can be done, basically. Yeah. Tracy Hinton on Facebook says, hello, everyone. Hey, Tracy. But Ty, have you tried to wholesale in the pre-foreclosure market and were you successful? Um, Really, no. I've done, quote unquote, uh, some pre-foreclosures. Well, I say some, a couple. <laughs> and those were more or less by accident. Um, and we didn't go through the normal process that uh, other people go. So I don't have the uh, patience for it. And what I mean by that, uh, on a pre foreclosure, unless the equity is already there, 
uh, I'm not normally going to be interested. I'm not interested in trying to go through the short sale process because um, you can go through that entire process. And I uh, accidentally went through that last year around this time. Uh, well, I guess it was maybe November or December. And um, uh, the realtor didn't tell me that was her father's house. She didn't tell me that whenever she showed me the house that her pro father was behind in payments and it was a short sale. And so when we did the contract, I had a buyer ready to go in, in everything. Matter of fact, the buyer stepped in my place and he was just going to pay me outside of closing. And, um, but that was only after we figured out a short sale. And so we waited this over, it was all probably almost three months and come back and they give up. We offer 55,000, which was the only number we were going to go with. And they come back at 88,000. So that's what I don't have patience for. Now, they could have easily came back and said, yeah, we'll accept the 55, but three months to come up with that, I don't have the patience for that. Then what you have to do to go, mm -mm. people make a living doing that. It's just not my thing. All right, there you have it. Uh, welcome, Fernando Oliva is a new subscriber. Welcome. Glad to have you. Hope you get some useful information. Uh, Keldrick on Facebook says, when do you pay taxes on a wholesale deal? It's just like a business. It's up to you. You're going to pay it quarterly uh, or at the end of the year. You know, that's what CPAs are for. It's, it's income. Um, it's not a lot of overhead. So you need to be, you need a CPA, but it's income. It's a business. So, but, but that's one of them good problems in the famous words of Marlo Stansfield from The Wire. Okay, Terrence Joseph on YouTube says, he found a home that has been boarded up for six to seven years. The city cuts the yard and the owner is dead. How do I find out who is taking care of the property? Well, if the city's uh, cutting the yard, no one. Um, that's just, uh, that'll be a simple, uh, well, I don't know if a title search will work. I would ask the neighbors, starting to uh, see if they know of any of the relatives. And um, that's where I would start. Then you could start to try to skip trace the name to try to find relatives and see what the situation may be. And you can do a title search on it. I'm not sure how in depth they'll go at finding out who's the uh, heir of that property or whatever, uh, without you being able to provide some relatives uh, of that individual. But uh, that I would start with the neighbors just to answer your question. All right. Um, Corey Woodman on Facebook says, Ty, thanks for the videos and help. Um, I've been texting you and watching vids is all I'm thinking about. <laughs> question for you. A guy called and his parents died, but they still owe $140,000 on their mortgage. The after repair value is 210 ish What do I do when a mortgage or loan is still involved? They owe 140 and he said 220? 210. 210? Yep. Uh, are they going to sell it for the 140? Uh, which is still probably is not a deal. Um, we don't know what the repairs are. Um, but this is an opportunity for us to break out the deal later. The deal you later. <laughs> so hey. let, let, let me let me set that up uh, right quick here. But this is an opportunity to throw it in. I already know that's probably not a deal, uh, but I'm going to use it anyway. So, so we're going to share our screen here. New deal. Uh, we're going to call this uh, show 24. All right, guys. Just while he's setting that up, what he's going to do is go to dealyourlater.com. And what this is, you all have access to it, D-A-L-U-L-A-T-O-R, like a calculator. Go to it, and you can plug and chug your own numbers to see if you have a deal or not. So you ready to share your screen? Ready to share my screen. Okay. All right. Now, the, cert, the actual the site that I'm an affiliate of is Rehab Valuator, so it's not my service. It's just that before I send individuals to someone else's um product or service, um, I like to go through my gateway. So I'm upfront about that. So, but, all right. So uh, he said the, uh, we'll just assume the price of how much 140, what? Well, he said, uh, he just added some more information. He says they owe 140K. He offered 90K 
and the ARV is 210. All right, so we're going to go with the 140 because he can't go below that, and I'll explain right. that in a second. Okay. So we'll just say, okay, I put in 140 as the actual purchase price, and um, we'll just say 10000 as the repairs. Uh, just to, I like to normally go with 15000 That's what I like to go with. All right, so I'm up updating that. All right. Then he said the uh, after repair value is 210 Okay. And then uh, you'll sell it at 210 So, all right. Um, now, uh, you have it at 140 That's the actual purchase price. So, your money is not built in here. All right. So, in reality, this number is going to have to go up. So, even if you said you wanted to make uh, forty five thousand on I mean for, on five thousand on it, but I'm going you're going to market it at at uh, one fifty probably, but we'll just say one forty, one forty five. All right. All right. Now, if you look here, the the, the buyer has an opportunity to make thirty two thousand dollars, thirty two thousand three hundred dollars in profit. You can see this, Adrian. Yes. Okay. So the uh, return on investment is just under 20%. Okay, so that's a possibility If the repairs are quite a bit less, then you may have an opportunity there. Uh, it still, is, that's a lot of money to spend uh, for the 32,000, but maybe it's a hot market. It's not difficult to remove, to move properties. So maybe there's an opportunity there. So as you see here, they owe 140. So the wholesaler, the person that posted the question, they would get uh, 140. Uh, they they will mark it up to their buyer 145. So the buyer actually would pay 145, and they would make five grand on this, which is a decent payday. You know, it, you know, some you get some bills paid with that. And um, so you're selling that to your the ARV is 210. So we'll assume they're selling at 210, and then so their profit, the buyer, I mean the cash buyer is 32 300. Return on investment is 19.82%, so just under 20%. When it's thin, and uh, hopefully these repairs are right, and maybe a little less at 15,000, but that may be an opportunity for you. Um, let me see if I can pull up a report here to show you how it looks. Once you, uh, this is something what you will present to an actual buyer. So I went here over to view reports and did the market sheet for flip exit. And so it's going to generate a report here. And then so right here is the full report. And this is what you would actually send to your uh, buyer. So that's the after repair buyer. That's the purchase price that they will buy from you. And you will make the five grand. Uh, you have the uh, repair cost built in there. Then you have their flip profit of 32,300. And then they can see the return on, return on investment, the ROI. So there's our deal you later deal first deal tonight. So hopefully we'll have more that we can analyze. Oh. Okay. For those who were saying that they couldn't see it, um, it, most definitely, I don't think you can see it on Instagram and Facebook. I don't think you see it there either. Um, so guys, I know Corey, it was your question in your own Facebook. So just when the video posts after we're done, I would suggest coming back um, to the YouTube video and and watching it there yeah we're about we were about uh we'll say we were about 20 minutes in to the video okay so yeah about 20 about minutes 20. in just fast forward and you'll see how your deal um and your numbers crunched on um the deal you later and like i see another one already in the comments on youtube that we can use it for um but we'll answer a few more questions before we pull that back up maybe we'll have some new subscribers um log in or whatever Okay, um, let's see here. Jay, what's up on Instagram? Said is he almost had his first deal this week from a bandit sign. Didn't get it, but that's all he needed to see that the sign works. That's right. Signs work, y'all. Put them up. They work. Um, if a owner wants to sell 15 properties as a package, do I have to put all 15 properties under contract separately? I can answer that one. You might have 15 different buyers. So... Yeah, unfortunately, which things I am I right? Am I right? You, you're correct. Um, that's the way you have to treat it that you'll have 15 different buyers. Seller probably won't go for that, <laughs> but that's the way you'll have to treat it. Um, because even if you had three buyers, they still need to be separated. 
So, you know, so yeah, you'll have to, uh, I, I would go with 15 different contracts, a nuisance, but if you don't, it, you could go with one contract. Um, it just depends some other factors that go into that. Uh, number one, it needs to be an option. The seller may not, it may not be an option, but we're assuming that it's an option that he'll just let you peel off as needed to sell them all. But if it's just a package deal, either a package deal or no deal, then yeah, you can just go with one contract in most cases. So uh, it'll have to be detailed to identify each property or whatever, but uh, you could do it that way. But it all depends on the flexibility of the seller. So. Okay, DJ One Million says, I made a mistake and put we buy homes instead of we buy houses on my sign. Does it really matter? Um, well, uh, I'm going to say yes, it does, uh, but it's better than nothing. Um, I, I'm going to always say that some action is better than uh, not anything because a home could be an apartment that you're renting or a home could be a house that you're renting. You know, home is not really the, the actual structure itself is the is the um, the dwelling where you feel comfort and shelter, cool, hot. You know what I'm saying? You know, whatever you got, whether you got problems or a uh, loving home or this. communist, huh? Luther told him a house is not a home. Not a home. Hey, there it is. <laughs> there you go. There it is. So, whereas a house, your home could be your house, but you can have more houses. You know what I'm saying? You really don't have one home in a sense. And you can have homes, but you really don't have one home. That's why they call it a homestead. You know, everything else is considered absentee. So um, I, I would always recommend how, I know you were trying to be a little different or whatever, but uh, it, you don't have much room to work with. You can, um, I would show some of my signs that we have that, you know, you and Asia and I have been using but, uh, oh, don't do it. They already be copying the cat too much, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I was ready, though. I was ready. Oh, hey, hey, already too much copycat going right around here, man. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but anyway, I, I, we can't prevent that. Go on and show it. Yeah, you, we can't prevent it. I don't want you to put the number. That's, that's, that's the thing I don't want you I'm to I'm showing the backside. Boom. Oh. <laughs> well, now that's going to help anybody. <laughs> Cause it's a nine by twenty four. Okay, yeah. Somebody asked what size though. Seriously, in there. Um, yeah, nine you... by nine by twenty four is what 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 we go with, you know. So. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, hush, Terrence. Terrence said he called my pastor and tell him I'm singing on Thursday and refused to sing on Sunday. You right? Cause I told him I wasn't joining the choir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, this somebody you know for real? No. Oh, okay, okay. Delicious. You got some compliments on your shirts, by the way. Mm -hmm. They say you look oh, good. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, all right. I'll have to do, that more. Have to do more of that. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see here. Um, when I find a vacant home, what is the best and fastest way to locate the owner? Um... You know what? I'm about to put out a video. They just said, asked me what we're going to mention this, but I'm going to probably uh, do a video in the next day or so to come out on an app. I mentioned another app, which is it's good. Also, you almost have to use both of them because one of them have a little bit of better option than the other. But I'm about to uh, recommend an app that's on Android and uh, Apple devices, where the other app that I recommend is only on Apple from, the, from, from my memory. Um, so this, this is like, but it's so good. And it starts with, uh, being able number one, to figure out what the address is. Number two, well, some, which is normally easy, but number two, who's the actual owner. So once you determine who's the owner, then how to find an owner, as I just mentioned about the person saying the grass is being cut, the person died. You start with the neighbors. All right. You start with the neighbors. Um, well, let me say this. First of all, when you look up the property in, in, in the app that I'm talking about, depending on the county, because this stuff is only going to be as accurate as the information that the county that you're dealing with and how they provide it to information brokers in most cases. But you start with the county because normally the tax bill has to go somewhere unless you're in a non-disclosure state. And I'm, and I'm not sure how that works in, in those types of states. But here in Alabama, that information is public information. 
So the ba- the tax bill has to go somewhere. So hopefully the mailing address of the owner is not the same address as the property that you're targeting. So what you would do is uh, you simply pop something in the mail to them and see if they're interested in selling. Uh, it's really that simple. Uh, as I said, the other thing you could do is go and um, you can you can try to find a phone number for them also, but you can ask the neighbor. Sometimes they just know and uh, you give them an, an incentive to be able to um, to to provide your phone number because they're probably not going to give you the person's number, but to provide your number, give them an incentive. Tell them you give them five hundred or thousand dollars if you buy the house uh, and pass your number along to the seller. You know, say assuming that you close the deal, you'll pay them. Um, and then if you do some skip tracing using services like Intellis, you look for uh, known relatives and you try to reach out to those relatives. Some of their numbers, uh, phone numbers may be public. And you reach out to them and, and again, give them the same incentive you give the neighbors. So those are just a, a couple of ways you try to um, find owners. Some people are bold enough to put a we buy houses uh, sign in the yard or on the property. I've done that once, got cussed out. So I, that was it for me. But some people are. Uh, gator, we ain't got the gator, but I, I'm, I'm, and so some people are more gator than I am, and they continue to do it, you know, so, um, hey, I, I've been trying to call you, man, that's the only way I thought I could reach you, you know, so you better come get this blankety blank sign on my yard, I know that, but anyway, so those are some ways. Yeah, guys, I got my feelings hurt just the other day about a sign. Mm-hmm. What sure. did he tell you? What did he tell you, Adrian? Told me I had no GD right to put my F and sign on his stop sign. Almost caused an accident. I don't see how. Yeah, he actually left a message saying that. Wow. I should have called him back and said, roll tight. That fixes everything in here. (laughs) Roll tight. Just nod your head and say, roll tight. They say, roll tight. We good. (laughs) Okay, let's see here. Ty, can you speak about lease? purchase deals and how I can take on a partner. Okay. Um, before I do that, I forgot we should have did this in the beginning. You know, we, I did a earlier, I guess, short uh, promotion flip a uh, We're having a, a live event. Really the first time I've ever done anything like this, a old student, a old, a previous student, one of my first students uh, in Huntsville, Alabama on Monday uh october 9th uh uh, really i'm going to be there pretty much probably from noon up until the actual event at 6 p.m uh if you want more information about that go to flipmanlive.com uh Uh, that's flipmanlive.com and you can register and get more information on it um uh there's an actual video here uh, on the channel uh, where Kelly and I was were discussing it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, about lease options, you said uh, partnering with someone on lease options? That's correct. Okay, well, I'm not sure why they need a partner on it unless it's someone else's deal. Um, but with a lease option now, it's just a, it's a different ball game. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to hold on to the property, meaning you're gonna receive the monthly cash flow, the upfront, uh, down payment from the tenant buyer, and then if they cash out uh, at the end of the uh, at the lease with financing to buy the property. So, um, but as far as partnering on the deal, I'm not sure you have to provide more information on what, what what specifically would you like to know about partnering on the deal. You know, what is, what is the partner bringing to the table, or what are you bringing to the table to to make a partnership have to even exist? I guess would be my question to you. All right. Hope that helps. Steve James on Facebook says, how does private money list.net work? Well, basically it's a service provided um, um, by uh, Keith Yaki that he provides a list of private money lenders. And uh, actually I'm I'm going to be promoting something similar to that where uh, you can get 100% uh, funding for flips if you want to do that. Really not my thing, have done it. Just hadn't got back into that side of it. Um, but you'll be hearing more about that. I tried to think of a, a name to register. You know you know, I like to do it. I'm gonna send you through my funnel first to get to whoever you need to get to. But I uh, spoke with, uh, which was referred by Kelly earlier today, this, this um, uh, young lady 
uh, powerful. Uh, some of you all probably already know because our following is huge. Make me look like an ant or whatever. But um, I'm going to hook up, and she has a serious option. If that's it, that's what you want to get to. And the, and the idea is to be able to do some residential flips, but also to be able to, you know, to gravitate over into the commercial world and use some of those resources that you make from uh, residential to to get in the big boy world. But as far as privatemoneylist.net, um, it's just a list. It's a service that provides a list of, uh, I hadn't looked at it in a while, but it used to be over 400 private money lenders. So it just provides a list with their contact information and you call them and see what their criteria is and uh, as far as what you're trying to look for for funding. So well, there you go. All right, there you have it. Um, and that live event will be recorded, correct? They can come back and watch it later? Uh, yeah, she and I um, um, are discussing that. That's not set in stone that it will be. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure yet. That that's, that's not set in stone yet. Okay. Um, the syndicator. Hey there. What do you do to protect yourself when you close the deal after wholesaling a property and it comes back that the property had a bunch of liens and investor comes back to you? That shouldn't happen, right? Yeah, that, that shouldn't happen. Now, that's what title company is for. On top of that, that's what title insurance is for. That goes back on the title company. They're the ones supposed to have done their job and that's why they have title insurance. So that does not come back on you. It shouldn't come back on you. Let me just say that anything can you can be sued for anything. It doesn't mean they have a legitimate uh, uh, a legitimate uh, claim. A claim, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, but that shouldn't come back on. You. It's just not how it works. All right. What up, Ty? Recently got the nine by twelve mm -hmm. signs. What's the next size? Would you recommend to go out and hang? Nine by twenty-four, right? Yeah, right. Nine by twenty-four. I hope that's because nine by twelve would not look right. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's what he put, it, but I don't know. That's, but that's it is. is. That's probably what it's. What was his question though? What was the question? I just said I've recently got the nine by twelve signs. What's the next size? Would you recommend to go out and hang? I, I don't. I'm not sure. If, uh, the poster, if you could. Be a little bit more clear on on what you mean there. I'm not sure what you mean. All right, let's see here. Jumping back on to YouTube, what's the credit requirement for funding for flipping? Um, I'm not going to get into that part of it. Um, I'll let uh, the master blaster explain that once you get to her. Um, but. Uh, you got some stuff. So I'm not going to, to turn anyone away on it because of what she can do, regardless of what your situation is. It just takes longer for some than others. So you'll be hearing more about that later. Um, but um, I'm, I apologize that I didn't have something ready to go where you can start accessing it right now, uh, but uh, it will be within a couple of days. I'll have something ready to go. All right, on average, what's the standard time from beginning to close on a deal? If everything whole, goes smoothly. On a wholesale deal? Yeah. Um, wow, if everything goes smoothly, two weeks. Because <laughs> my definition is everything goes smoothly. I put in the contract today, I have a buyer tomorrow, we close within the next 10 days. That That's that's a smooth deal. And that, that happens. It's happened to me a bunch. But I don't like to put it out there like that because that gives that all of them are like that. No, nah, they, they ain't all like that, you know. So, but that's that's a perfect deal. Um, fact, probably the second biggest deal I ever did closed in eight days. Boom. How oh, how this eight days? Okay. Um, Chauncey wants to know with him just getting started, what type of property do you recommend, please? And thank you. Um, when he say what type of property is he referring to houses and uh, yeah, just houses. Uh, again, we sort of answered that uh, uh, before. It just depends on how fast you want to make money. If you want to make money fast in houses, if you just patient and want the bigger paydays, maybe wait some months then commercial, but nothing prevents you from doing both. If you have the knowledge and 
the uh, the the, the uh, Gatorism to, to, to get out there and make it happen. All right. You know what that means? We're getting ready to answer it. Is it a deal question? Are you going to pull up the deal you later? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. All right, guys. We're answering Johnny Cash Max question on YouTube. He has a property in Nyack, New York. Hope I said that right. Or maybe that's New York, New York. Unless Nyack is a place. It says Nyack. I don't know. I just read what's on the screen, guys. So don't come for me for that. Hold on, let me share right. the screen. Let me share the screen right quick. All right, guys. Again, on Facebook and Instagram, um, you probably won't see it, but you can listen and follow along. In fact, if you want to go to dealyalater.com and plug and chug the information as he goes, maybe you can end up with the same number. That would probably be even more useful to you, you know, to yeah, go about 30. We'll be about 31 minutes into this particular video. So you can go on YouTube and see the replay. We're about 31 minutes in. So let's, what, what are the numbers? I have a property in Nyack, New York. ARV is 1 million to 1.3. There's no COFO on file. Mm -hmm. And estimated 250000 in repairs. It's 70000 a good deal. I'm going to try to go lower. But at seventy thousand, is it a good deal? He can get it for seventy thousand. That's what his post says. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's a good deal. So I'm, I'm putting in the numbers now here. I'm sort of backdooring it. All right, so I'm putting in the two hundred and fifty thousand in repairs. All right, and so so he can get it at seventy. So I'm just going to automatically say you can wholesale that property. Probably at we'll just say. 500,000, all right? So let's look at the numbers now. So uh, we got 500,000, the closing costs are probably more than, than what we normally have. So I'm gonna put in here uh, 3,500 and then the holding costs on a property like that probably be another, we'll just say 2,500. So that's gonna take that number up, all right? Okay, so let's look at the number here. He's gonna he has it on a contract. We'll just say a hundred thousand, all right. But he's gonna wholesale it at five hundred thousand. You have the uh, closing costs and holding costs plus the um, uh, uh, the repair costs of two fifty. The uh, I put in there one point one million, all right. And then he'll sell it at one point one. So the Cash buyer would make two hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars at a thirty-five percent ROI. All right, he's all he's over that all day. But you made four hundred grand on just the wholesale flip. So if you got that deal, man, <laughs> we don't need a dealer, a calculator, a, a, a cash later, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> that that's a no-brainer of a deal, man. Those are once in a lifetime type deals, especially on residential. Wouldn't be that out, out of out of the ordinary to make that kind of money on a commercial deal, but on a on a on a retail, uh, I mean on a residential property, yeah, that's a smoking deal, man. Just a smoke. You can you can even uh, go up another probably hundred grand on your end, and let me just do that and wholesale it to him for six hundred. You make a half a million, and he still gets so he still makes a hundred and sixty, but it's not as attractive. Still about twenty percent. A return would still wouldn't be a bad payday. Normally, they're not going to spend that kind of money for uh, one hundred sixty-seven thousand. So, uh, you probably wouldn't need to leave it at probably five hundred thousand. But at five hundred, that's just a no-brainer of a deal for everybody involved. You know. So. Okay. Well, stay right there. Johnny Cash cleared up. He says, "I actually told the lady six hundred and fifty, six hundred and seventy-three. Just need." POF. Who, who who's the lady? Is that the buyer? Is that what you're offering it to her for? If yeah. You mind while we're still on this. Okay. Uh, he, he's going. Oh, let me let me let me pull out the report while we're doing that. It, okay. It okay. So generate. All right. So so there go the numbers broken down there. After repair, I did one point one instead of one point three. Uh, purchase price five hundred. He has in the contract for a hundred. Uh, rehab cost two fifty. So total projected cost with with including the holding costs and closing costs seven fifty six. 
So flip profit 267, ROI 35%. So there you go. All right. Um, he never responded. Um, I haven't seen anything as of yet, but yeah, every, I agree with everybody posting. That would be the deal of the year. I might not do another deal yeah, for the rest I'm of the telling year. You. What's <laughs> Go sit down somewhere. I'm not, I'm not a motivated seller. Oh my god. Um, I don't know, but two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in repairs. But even still, that's you can do a lot in repairs with two fifty. That's shoot. Well, on a million dollar property, that wouldn't be nothing. Really? It wouldn't be uh, nothing. I yeah. wouldn't know. I ain't seen one. <laughs> that, wouldn't be <laughs> that, that would be like. Uh, okay, so um. And it wasn't nine by 12. It was nine by 24. He says that um, he doesn't think that's noticeable enough. So if you went up in a size, what's the next size you would recommend? Well, they're noticeable enough. Phone rings off the hook. Um, 18 by 24, the next size up. But those are too big, in my opinion, even though I use them uh, for years. The, the nine by 24, uh, you know, that's fine, but you can do whatever you want to. I'm just telling you that. Those are, you can't have too much on them on the signs. I, you know, I have to know what the signs say. Maybe they, maybe they are too small. If you have too much text on them, um, you can only say so much. Okay. Um, Immortal Spirit on YouTube asks, what should I put more emphasis on, the property's ARV or the comps? Because the ARV says 25K, but these properties are in one of the worst hoods where I am. He's in St. Louis. And the comps are like ninety five hundred. Well, the, uh, the the ARV, the comps are they that that's that's the same thing. That that's how you come up with an ARV from the comps. The comps are the comps. Now you can have crossover neighborhoods where you can just cross one street and go from seventy five thousand dollars to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That those are things you have to know about your market. You know, it's not difficult to to figure that out. Uh, just number one by looking on the map, but it definitely if you uh, troll the area, you'll you'll see just the difference in the neighborhoods. Normally, will just change. You know, even though it just may be a block or a street over, you know, it has to cross over at some point. So that's probably that may be what you're you're looking at there. But uh, but but the comps are it's ARV. People get the ARV term mixed up because you have the word repair in there. Uh, it simply means fixed up. What would the house be worth in excellent condition? So that means you have to do some some repairs, some fixing. So that's what that means, which you use comps to determine that. Okay. Corey Woodman on Facebook says, if you need an extension on your contract to find a buyer, do you have the seller sign a new contract or make some sort of revision on their original? Or do you just call it a loss? Either or. If they'll, if they'll give you more time, either or. Either, or, you know, whether you revise the existing contract or go with a new one. I normally just revise, you know, the existing contract. But both work. All right. Mr. Brian Hunt says, I have a motivated seller who wants to sell their home ASAP. They don't know how much the home is worth and they don't know how much they want for it. You don't sound too motivated. You don't sound too motivated. Go ahead, y'all. They're just a seller. Don't confuse motivated seller with seller. But go ahead. Um, how do I find the numbers? I, Zillow, I think you've already just mentioned that actually in the comps. Um, yeah, just, you know, I, the video you need to go watch is um, top three ways to calculate ARV. Uh, that's a recent video that I did. It'll, it'll, it'll get your mind right on how to understand that, how to, how to calculate that. Okay. Ty, Ralph from Boston, Massachusetts, is wholesaling enough to live off of or do you recommend another occupation oh, most people enough. i spoke to about real estate say a second income is needed <laughs> the question is how much money do you need to live off of what what's what what do you consider a good salary to live off of well, let's let's establish that all right there you have it um, Chauncey, but, but I, not to interrupt you, a, but to answer your question, it's enough to live off of. Norm, normally, six figures is enough for most people. Would you agree, Adrian? 
I would you agree. Know, it may not go that far in New York City or Southern California, but if you're wholesaling, you're going to make more money than anybody else than, than most people around the country. So it's going to balance out. When I say six figures, I mean just over $100,000 or whatever, but six figures would mean $750,000 a year. So, um, but for most people, $80,000, if you inject five, if somebody can make $5,000 a month wholesaling, that's 60 grand a year. Most people are above most people, right? Okay, so double that, we're at 120. That uh, you, you change your situation quickly or where financially. So, or, so you, you have to give me a number of what you think is, is enough to live off of. You know, that, that's the first thing because that's going to be different for everybody. All right, there you have it. Um, that might answer questions for quite a few of you on the step out there on faith. Um, no, don't do that. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not about it. I didn't do it. I guess I did, but uh, when, I, when you say step out there on faith, I mean they quit. No, I mean, like, you know, figure out what you need, figure out what you need to have in the bank, figure out, you know, whether this is what you want to put. You got to put time into it. This can be tedious, very tedious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. out. The yeah, phone. I, I thought you meant them oh, putting their gig. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't advise people doing that unless you already have X number of dollars saved to pay your existing bills or whatever. Now, some people do it and get out there and make it happen. I'm just not going to advise someone to do that or whatever because you, it does allow you to continue what you're doing. For most people, some people have some very demanding jobs, but, uh, but for most people, it allows you to do both. Or whatever, just all about time management, you know. So, and then you'll know when this income will replace that income. You know, it was but clear as my black face to me. All right, Jody Ross asks: Is a double close better to use when a person is using financing to close the deal? And how do I get paid? Um. Matter of fact, somebody asked that question when me, Kelly, and I was online earlier. Uh, they, they need, yeah, she answered a couple of questions. Uh, she asked a couple of questions, and I answered them. Um, if they need financing, like going to Wells Fargo or something, an outfit like that, you don't have a buyer, not for wholesaling. So that that's that's the simple answer. There are some ways to do it. Nothing I will repeat here that I would recommend because you're going to get people to do something they're not supposed to be doing or whatever. And it may not even be illegal, but I wouldn't encourage it. So no, uh, I, I, if you don't have a cash buyer, you do not have a buyer. Now hard money is still a cash buyer, uh, whatever, but that traditional financing and then no, nah, you don't, you don't have a buyer. So don't even worry about double close assignment, whatever. You don't have a buyer. All right. Um, I have a question on Instagram and it requires the gator. Let's see here. Ty, do you ever feel bad when you lowball a seller who's an old lady or selling because of death in the family, they accept your offer and you end up making a 20, 30 K spread and they paid on it for years and they need money now. We live in a capitalistic society. Um, opportunity. Um, if you're asking me that I should have said, hey, I can get you more money, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what to take. I'm not forcing them to sell at a price that they don't want to sell on. I'm not forcing, I don't even operate like that. Even if someone did, it wouldn't be no big deal to me if they were pressured. But I don't even operate like that either. You know, they're going to give me the price in most cases. Now, if they force me into making an offer, if they accept it, they call that business. There's no me getting into um, what their situation is. You know, in most cases, the only reason they're selling to me cheap is because there's a level of motivation there for some reason. Uh, some of it is more dire than others, but I, I can't get caught up in that. That's going to be a personal thing. Uh, whatever, but I, I guess they're asking, am I taking advantage of them? 
I'm not taking advantage of them because again, I don't, I don't pressure people. You know, they don't have to do business with me. That's what you, that's what people don't understand. They don't have to do business with me. It, you know, like I don't want to get in no political speech or anything. It's like we talk about freedom of speech. Yeah, you have freedom of speech. Freedom of speech means the government can't lock you up or whatever. But if if I'm employing you, yeah, you can say whatever you want to, but I have the right as an employer to fire you. You know, it's just the government can't put you in jail for your your speech or whatever. So this is similar. I'm not making them sell to me at a price that's lower than what they probably could make. I'm giving them that option to sell to me at a price that I will If the numbers don't work for me, they're not going to feel sorry for me if my bills are not paid, right? So, you know, that, that's just my two cents on it. So I hope, hopefully me not rambling, <laughs> I'm not rambling, yet, but nah, that's just, you need, that's some countries that will be glad to accept you, but we live in a capitalist society and you make money to survive, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm giving them a price. They accept it. Everybody's happy. They got what they wanted. I'm getting what I wanted. No matter who, how much money I make, I, I don't, I don't get that mentality, but you know, whatever. Who, who am I? <laughs> You know, I, I, I equate that. I remember back when I was in college, I had to do some some paper and economics about, uh, I guess, the cliche of people saying being ripped off. And we use the drink machine as the factor. And it was like, who goes and pays $2.50 for a drink? That's ripping people off when I can go to the store and pay 50 cents for the drink. How thirsty are you? How thirsty are you? Somebody's gonna pay that two fifty. I didn't force you to pay two fifty for that twenty ounce coke, but somebody's gonna do it, and enough people do it for me to make some money off of it. But you ain't thirsty enough. If you're thirsty well, enough or motivated enough, you'll take it, aka you'll pay it, right? Yeah. Who say fifty cent is too much? Right? I think it's too much. I take a twenty five phantom. You know what I'm saying? Why well, don't sell it for a nickel? They probably still make a profit. Or whatever, so you you can't get in that kind of stuff, man. <laughs> hey, they got they got they got options for that. That's a great thing about this country. We got a lot of problems, but the great thing about it is that you have options. If you don't want to do this or anything like this, I can name a lot of a lot of. I, I seen a report not too long ago that a lot of small businesses are having trouble finding employees. They had plenty of jobs out there for you. Go make it happen. You know what I'm saying? They, you do your job. They pay you. Go home. Do whatever you want to do. As long as you're happy, that's the only money. money that's the only thing. Money don't make does not make you happy. It does not. So you got to do what makes you happy. In my opinion. Well, I'm happy. I can get some money. I'll be happy. I, I can buy the stuff that makes me happy. Okay, but I, I'm done. All right, on Facebook, we have a question. Somebody just put some band of signs together. They were ready, like handmade band of signs. And it's 8 o'clock in Pennsylvania. When would you suggest putting them up? I want to do it ASAP, but I only have 20 until my order of 100 arrives. So I don't want to waste them. Get gay to go put them up. Well, 20 is not a lot, but it's better than zero. Um, and, and, and I applaud you. I want to take immediate action. I put them up. I never put them up at night. Uh, broad daylight is. Am I correct, AP? Right. Broad daylight, man. That, that's what broad I do. You. Broad daylight. I couldn't imagine putting them up at night. In reality, I think I tried that once, and it was sort of like around this time right here or whatever. And um, I said, I ain't doing this no more. What am What am I doing? I'm about to get killed out here or whatever. So no, uh, not me. All right. Um, let's see here. D Money, I see your question on Instagram about going back to old content. Post your question. I'll make sure I ask it um, if there's something else that you need to know. He just said, can you please go back to your old content? I'm not sure. Not sure what he's talking about. I don't know. Um, hey, Ty and A. Thank you, Ty, for answering my question last week um, about who pays for a clear title. You said buyer closes or it can be negotiated say the buyer pays and the title's not queen what happens then i think we answered this earlier it shouldn't if it's not clean well, it shouldn't be a well, deal right well i think what he's saying is that um 
you go through the process and uh, they come back with not a clear title. Well, normally what's going to happen, you're going to try to clear it up. And sometimes that takes weeks, sometimes months to do it. So it's really in limbo. Um, and if the uh, title company does, if the buyer does enough business with the title company, they'll just eat that. You know, I think we did on Instagram. Let me see. Yeah. Let me go back live. Yeah. Mm, that's just... You didn't see it? Mm -mm. Oh, it just ended for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's going back now. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, they'll just eat it if you do enough business with it. With it. Okay. Um, Jody, I see you posted that question about four times. He's already answered it in regards to the using double closing with someone using financing. Um, I believe he said it's more than likely possible, just something that he doesn't do or has. Well, well, yeah, I, I really don't recommend it. Yeah, uh, it's really it's a thing, a couple of things you could do, but in reality, if you don't have a cash buyer, you don't have a buyer. So that answers it. Okay. Um, I saw a guy removing signs at an intersection. Can you approach them if they are not a city employee? Baby, let that sign go. Let that this sign go. It ain't yeah. that deep. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that deep. Just it's, in the words of Ty, people are ignorant. Yeah, ignorant. They, they, you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have those type of people. Matter of fact, that's probably who pull more signs down than anybody. It's people that you know they just get really angry. When they see banner signs, you know, you just you're gonna have those people. So, you know, it's not worth the confrontation. You never know. You're dealing with a, a, a pretty special person that they literally get out of their vehicle and they're not working for the city. Sometimes the realtors will do it, they just hate or whatever. But and they don't in one of those relations, maybe it's another investor that you're impeding on his territory. I get that or whatever. But some people just do it just because you all shouldn't be doing that. You know that's against our law. You might not want to approach this cat. You know, it ain't worth it. You know, just be a little bit more creative. Maybe you want to put them in a different area, you know. So even though, even though I take that back, I did it once. I, I did it once. What happened was this lady called me and said, and I had just put the sign up. These two guys are pulling your sign down, right? And I went back. And it was two young guys, not going to call their race out. And, hey, I confronted them. You know, uh, they were terrified. <laughs> Whatever stuff. So, hey, they said that uh, uh, they were just getting into business and, you know, they thought it would be a good idea to eliminate the competition and they wouldn't do it anymore. I think those guys got out the business, you know, after I confronted them. But I wouldn't advise anyone to do that. I wouldn't advise anyone to do that. But they were doing it because they were trying to eliminate the competition. Don't do it. I would hate to have to tell the story of when being Gator went wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you had a feet when Gator went bad. <laughs> uh, Kathy says it. Kathy says it's better to hang bandit signs with the buddy. One person drives, the buddy jumps out and puts up the sign. Oh, You're right. Unless the person good. is supposed to jump out the side, put the sign up, it's on the phone, and you sitting there, and you waiting, and you be like, "Man, I just might as well jump out and put it up myself." That that happens all the time to me, Kathy. I I just don't understand. Huh? You, you mm, no right. comment. You, ah. you, you ain't right. <laughs> Solomon wants to know: Can he use your contract on a probate deal? Yeah, it won't matter. All yeah. right, Solomon. Hope that answered it for you. Yes, you can use the contract on your probate deal as well. Um, Sandra Coleman says, is 20 yellow letters too many in the beginning? 20? Add a zero. <laughs> you need to add a zero, Sandra. That's not a lot, baby girl. I hope you can get a deal out of that, that number, but that's not a lot. Um, now, if you're just doing yellow letters to all random um uh, absentee owner, you're not really doing any due diligence on it. 20 is not a lot. You need to definitely add a zero on to that. So 200. She said for apartments. Mm, that's, that's, that's not a bad number for apartments. So you, you have to specify now. 
that's not a bad number for us for apartments because you're, you know, the number of apartments out there versus the number of houses is substan substantially less. So um, that's not a bad number. Probably 50 would be ideal. But if you're doing 20 a week, that, that's a really good number, 20 a week. Yes, Shaq, that is a chump move. That's a real chump move. He says he saw in Detroit a wholesaler spray painting black spy putting black spray paint over another wholesaler sign. Yep, chump move. Oh, I yeah. Oh, you take yeah. it down and spray my number off. Um, Carolyn Taylor, what software do you uh, what software do you use to value a house or run a value? Not a realtor, so can't use MLS. Thank you for taking my question. If I hesitate when I read this because I didn't read it in full, and once I actually read it, I realize this question has already been answered. So we answered that, didn't we? Yes, we did. No, well, no. answer then. No, we didn't. Answer Carolyn. What, question. What's the question again? What software do you use to value a house or run a value? Not a realtor, so can't use MLS. And she the reason I wanted you to repeat that because you shouldn't have known what the answer was. You should have read that out again. Same on, same on you. Dealulater.com. I said we had already answered it. But I was right. What? We, we, we can never answer that one too much. O R Dillulator, like calculator. Dillulator. Yeah. Mm hmm Dillulator.com, Miss Carolyn. I hope that helps. Any anything else? That's that's wrong. What's next? Okay. Um Left. Oh, Jean, this was about the title. She says, thank you for mostly understanding my messed up question, but say whatever's on the title makes the deal fall through. Do you have to pay the buyer back? She, no, 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 no. It's just the, the I think you said, Miss Jean, that the buyer will more than likely eat that and hopes that you'll bring them another deal later. So mm -hmm. don't worry about that. That Cross that bridge when you get there. Get a deal on the table first. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, how do you do a closing if the seller lives in another state? Oh, um, use technology, uh, email, overnight, and uh, electronic signatures. Um, very simple. Those are the best ones. Now, what we haven't done, I know we haven't mentioned it. Um, how can they get your contract? Oh, just simply go to flipman.net. Uh, to get the, a copy of the contract, submit your name and phone number, and uh, you get a copy of it, boom, that's it. Flipman.net, just go to the, just, just. Big head, milk dud looking, anorexic man in the background, it looks nothing like Tyrone. Did I, did, is that good enough? <laughs> I have had my dose of haterade for the day. I do apologize. Oh, yeah, oh, hey, 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 boy, you just all over you, boy. I, I, I apologize. I do. I do. Okay, guys. Seriously, though, um, rounding out this hour, we've answered a lot of questions. Not as, it doesn't seem like not as many as previous. We've had some long questions. Um, you mean some long answers? Well, well, yeah, I apologize. Long answers. We've had some long answers. Gene, go ahead and repost your questions so I can make sure yours is one of my final ones for YouTube. I don't appear to have any questions right now on Instagram. I've answered all the questions on Facebook. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and do a little house cleaning. And then I'll pull about two more from YouTube and call it a day. So. Uh, yeah, so. Um, I'm, um, what you doing? Um. What I'm trying to do is <laughs> while we sit here to register this name so I can go ahead and promote it, even though I want anything to be up there probably until tomorrow. But uh, I'm trying to register some for this 100% uh, funding on, on flips if people are interested. So um, to get you over to a uh, uh, young lady I met today, she's, man, well, I, I haven't been impressed, that impressed with someone in a, in a minute. Uh, but um, yeah, so. Um, Go ahead and do the house cleaning while I while I register this deal here, and then I can promote it. 
Okay. And then, Jean, I see your question and Melanie. So I, I have my roundabout questions ready to rock and roll. Also, guys, just remember that Ty has the 200 plus videos available to you on his YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. All the information that you need to begin wholesaling is there. I promise you it is. I mean, you might have to bounce around, but and at the end of this video, um, once it posts to YouTube, about five, no more than 10 minutes, you can most definitely still ask questions there. He will reply. Um, he's easily accessible. So, hey, guys, go make money. Learn this. Read. Watch the information. Don't forget on Monday, he has a live informational. Um, so tune in for that as well. Not well, it, it, it's probably not going to be. We hadn't made a decision on where it's not going to be live, but we're going to probably record it. I'm not yeah. sure yet. Uh, it'll be in Huntsville, Alabama. So if you're... Um, Is uh, it private? Uh, no, it's not private. Whoever want to show up, you know what I'm saying? You can go. I'm sorry, we didn't put out the website. But there's another yeah. video here online. It's... Uh, um, 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 what is it? Uh, flip, flipmanlive.com and you can go get the information on uh, the location. You better to reach out to Kelly. She's the one that's pretty much putting this together or whatever. I'm just showing up, showing my ugly self up and um, talking about what I, what I, what I know about. All right, guys, flipmanlive.com. All right, Ty, I got my roundup of questions. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead with them while I'm trying to still figure this deal out. Okay. If you're running comps on a property that's a two-bedroom, two-bath, but your comp shows three-bedroom, two-bath homes, do you still go ahead and use those as comps? Um, you really, really, the bedrooms will matter, but the, um, they, they won't matter. It's more of the square footage in a sense. They matter, but it, it's not a deal break. It won't, it'll make it be off a couple of thousand. But it's more the uh, square footage that's going to be the more uh, contributing factor there than the actual um, um, than the uh, actual comps. I mean, the actual number of bedrooms is going to be the square footage that uh, is is a big player. Where the bedrooms may become more important is probably more in the sense of how fast you can move the property: a three bedroom versus a two, a four versus a three, or so on. So um, that that that's going to be the real difference in in my in my opinion. So, um, um, but uh, it's really just the square footage, and and that's what it's going to compare. But but again, the bedrooms will be taken in consideration. It's just that uh, the square footage is probably more dominant in my opinion. I may be wrong on that, but because it all plays a role or whatever. So. All right. Um, there are zero, I mean, zero bandit signs in my area. Should I even attempt it? Um, if there are no bandit signs uh, in your area, then uh, you can test. But what I would encourage you to do is to get outside of your comfort zone and, um, and see where, are, where bandit signs are. Um, is what I would do. Okay. Um, I have a deal coming together on a seven house bundle. My question is, how do I write up this deal? And is there a special contract format that I should use or that you recommend? Kind of answer that with the 15 house deal. Seven house bundle, seven separate contracts. You could possibly have more than one buyer, so you're gonna to have to separate that jeans. I, I hope that answers your question. You got anything else for that, Ty? Um, no, nah, it, it, it's gonna depend. Number one, uh, on how if the seller is not going to allow you to uh to be able to split them up, then yeah, you're gonna just go with one contract, you know, it'll be detailed, but just one contract. But if that's an option to split them up, then you want to go with separate contracts. Not that you'll have, we'll just say 15 buyers as well as 15 houses, but um. Uh, you may have three buyers and five, or they, one may do seven, one may do three, men, one may do five, if my math is right on that. And uh, so, uh, again, it all starts with what the actual owner of the property will be willing to do. All right. 
Ashley Young has a lady who came into her office and told her she wanted to buy a cash home to live in. I didn't want to pry on her budget, but I asked her how many bedrooms and baths she wants. Is this someone I can help? Um, she said, uh, read that again. Read that again for me. She had a lady who came into her office who has cash to buy a home. She wants to know, is this someone that she can help? And and what type of office did she have? Um, She didn't say. She just said it came into my office. So I'm a, not sure. She obviously isn't a realtor because I'm sure she would jump all over that. So you have to tell me what kind of office you have. I guess how you came in to meet this lady, Miss Young. Um, See if that helps. Mm. And, okay. and I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, let's see here. How do I go about finding a commercial buyer for your commercial deals you occasionally have for sale? I'm thinking about talking to some guys I met at a local REIA meeting. So he's asking, how would you go about actually presenting it to them? Uh, finding a commercial buyer for your commercial deals you occasionally have for sale. Well, you number to- one, one, number one, you'll want to strike up a conversation and see what their level of interest is in even doing commercial. All right, some guys have a ton of money that on the residential side and have zero interest in in commercial because they're just afraid of the numbers and then they just don't understand how to put a deal together, you know? So some of it's just fear and of the unknown um, more, you know, so, and so, but I would start with seeing what that level of interest is and, you know, making money through uh, commercial deals. So um, that, that's where you're going to start. Uh, and from there, uh, depending on their level of interest, then you want to know what would they be willing to put uh, into it as far as, number one cash obviously but more so their credit you know what they want to put on the line and what type of return now with commercial you know you, you have multi-family you have self-storage hotels uh retail strips um warehousing um obviously raw land uh what, what am i missing um multi-family i think i said that so there are a number of different uh property types you know so um, you know, again, finding out the level of interest and then going to what type of properties that they may be actually interested in. All right. Um, Jean, I apologize for the assumption on the name. Please forgive me. I meant no harm. Um, Jean knows what I'm talking about. Um, and Ashley is a property manager. That's how she came to meet the lady who came into her office. The, the, prop, the, the, the property manager, you said? Yeah, she's a property manager, and a lady came to her office asking, and you know, did she know where she could pay cash for a home? She's wanting to know, could she help her? Um, and what, and what type of oh, the property manager, you said? Right. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> she got cash. Well, the first thing you got to determine is, um, um, uh how much cash she's working with uh is the first thing um that that's it you know that's the first thing that you you got to figure out is how much cash she's working with and then uh, after you determine that then you want to find out what areas she wants to um she wants to uh fund deals in so uh that would be the the next thing. All right. Um, Melanie is a motivated seller who's asking for 30K. I found three comps for 80K, but most comps are between 30 and 50. Should I use the 80K comp instead? And in how so? How do I know which comps are as is or renovated houses? Well, how many, how many, how many of, is just one 80K uh, comp? Three. Oh, it's three. If it's three 80K comps yeah. and those are the highest, um, I'm normally going to roll with those. I would probably look at a map like on Zillow and see how close 
uh, they are to that particular property, but I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna probably uh, roll with that. All right, well, guys, we're rounding out. I'm just gonna close my eyes and go with the last one I see, and then we're gonna call it a night. Did now, you get what before, you, did you before, before, Yeah, before we do that, I, I found the domain that I want to roll with. I, I try to go with something simple and somewhat tells what it's for, uh, but the domain name for uh -oh. <laughs> it, now this is at the end of the video, so some people won't even see this, but that's cool. We'll, I'll be promoting the, 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 the dog out of it anyway. So, um, but it's uh, it's not up yet, the, the date is right now, but I'll have something up probably by tomorrow, no later than the next day, but dealfunding.net. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? Does it? Dealfunding.net. Was that com not available? Why do you no. love net? Oh, it's not available. You know, so we'll roll with it. You know what I'm saying? I like it. Deal fund All right, guys. Plug it. Dealfunding.net. I'm sure he'll come back and explain more about it later, but yeah. be on the lookout for it. It's coming. Dealfunding.net. Okay, deal funding. What are we gonna do with this? Uh, what what deal funding? Huh? Yeah. What okay. do you mean? What are we gonna do with it? Not flip funding, deal funding. Ooh, yeah. you might. What about flip funding? Did you? Nah, that? Nah, that really makes sense. Um, it oh, it does, and I didn't come up with it anyway. While I was trying to shoot it down so fast. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Whoever said that, I thought Adrian came up with. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't just want to say flips. I just wanted to say deal funding because it didn't always have to be a flip. I thought about flip. It was a couple of things I could have went with with that, but I just want a deal because you know, deals don't always have. You may want to hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? It may be a buy and hold situation. So, so dealfunding.net is what we're going to roll with. Again, it's not live yet. As right now, we're live, but the site is not live. I want to register it. You know, so I can start to promote it, but uh, dealfunding.net. You know, I'll have my own little logo. Of course, what color will it be? Red, blue, white. <laughs> so, and so you'll be seeing that coming to a YouTube screen near you uh, very soon. So uh, I think we're going to round it up. This uh, this particular flipping our show number 24 is in the can. Thanks to Adrian. Thanks to you all to come out, share this. Whether you're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, you know about the 200 plus videos that are free to anyone can take advantage of. If you want to get into wholesaling houses, don't forget about it. If you want a copy of that one page contract that I've been using since 2003, you can get a free copy of that by simply going to flipman.net. See the guy back there? I think that's me. Adrian says not. Submit your name, your phone number, and you'll be able to download the contract for free. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at flipman.net. That's flipman, D-O-T-N-E-T, -E and the same handle on Snapchat, even though I hadn't posted anything on Snapchat yet. And then on Twitter, uh, the Flipman. We need a coach. Why is everybody telling me to smile? Everybody's saying smile, hey, well, they, smile. Well, they know you probably frowning at what I'm saying right now. Smile, smile. So anyway, <laughs> um, uh, you're making me, oh, I, I was going smoother there. Uh, so anyway, you need a step-by-step -step coach with the courses on hotel and houses, apartments, and even flipping vacant commercial buildings, go to flipman.net. So again, show number 24 is in the can. Remember, I'm coming to Huntsville on Monday, 6 p.m. Be there earlier in the day. You can reach out to us through flipmanlive.com to get more information. That's flipmanlive.com. And guess what? We will see you all on the flip side and look at the gator. Be gator, y'all. Get like gator. A, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, doesn't <laughs> Not now. You gotta stretch his head out a little bit. <laughs> oh, we gotta do better than that. We gotta get a new gator, man. You tried. I should have bought that gator at the, at the convenience store. Okay, there we go. But uh, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>